Hey everyone, welcome back to the fifth and final episode in the Sweat Elite Ethiopian series. Super excited about today's one, it's probably the most important in the series. It's an easy run, I put in Toto, and I think it holds the key to a lot of very significant ways in which the Ethiopians plan their training weeks and the way in which they think about running. We're super lucky to have Mike Crawley back on for another episode. I can't thank him enough for coming on for, I think, three of the five episodes that we've had on Ethiopia. He has written a fantastic book called Out of Thin Air that really dives deeply into Ethiopian running. So if you want to know more about this, I can highly recommend it. I read it before going and it completely changed the way that I saw and viewed the Ethiopian running scene. I'd also like to give a big thank you to Haji's group, um, Haji in particular, and all his athletes for allowing me to follow them on so many of their sessions and for helping me out in so many ways, as well as a big shout out to Hadgu, my personal friend, who really went out of his way to make my time in Ethiopia easy and really made it possible for me to bring you guys the content. So let's jump straight into it. This is an easy run and in total. <laughs> Hey, one of the things that I found quite surprising about the way that people trained in Ethiopia was that a lot of what people do in an average week would far more closely resemble what we might think of as trail running than uh, road running and, and quite kind of gnarly trail running at that. A lot of the running is done on very steep hillsides with thickly forested uh, eucalyptus trees um, that people had to kind of weave in and out as they ran. A lot of running on easy days is done uh, weaving in and out, zigzagging between trees and at really quite a slow pace uh, as a result of the environment. This has all been first five minutes and we're traveling around like eight kilometers an hour, so whatever that is. And we would do runs sometimes where we were running sort of seven minutes per kilometer um, and I was there thinking you know this feels really slow and then reminding myself that um, at the front of the group was somebody who'd run 206 the year before or something and thinking well you know maybe I'm not the best maybe I'm not the expert here and just kind of go with it um, but I think the, the terrain is kind of used specifically to ensure that people are going slowly enough on their easy days. was something that, that I really noticed was that you know you have these three days a week where you're running really incredibly hard and it's important that you you're kind of um, getting the most out of those days but then you've got this really kind of polarized system of training where you're going really hard some days but um, extremely easy on other days. These guys have just been chilling chatting the whole way. We are now at 15 minutes. So they're a quarter of the way through the run. They're still just chilling, chatting, yeah, having a good time. The ground is super soft today. Um, I can see why this is good for a recovery run for sure. These runs in the forest were sometimes described more as a kind of form of massage than anything else. It was a way of making sure that you were running um, on uneven surfaces, using your muscles in slightly different ways and therefore not uh, risking kind of repetitive injuries and things. Uh, I talked to Zane Robertson about this, the New Zealander, and he said um, it was something that it took him quite a long time to get used to it when he was training in Ethiopia. Uh, but he said, <clears throat> I think the forest training makes the mind busy, the legs and feet strong, and the agility increased. And he said it's an amazing benefit, but also a huge risk for injuries. So um, it was interesting, I thought, because it kind of seems to be a bit of an injury risk in some ways, but also uh, it was seen as a way of avoiding injuries in many ways because um, it was not the kind of monotonous uh, motion that you would associate with uh, just running on a road the whole time. So if you watch throughout the video, this part here where they're running now, they'll come back to this section of forest multiple times throughout the video, throughout the run. Um, and it's not like they are running the same loop round and around, they're making it up every like as they're going. Um, and they're running these different loops that vary each time, but they 
uh, yeah, it just shows that they're using one small part of forest to do this long hour long run. Um, and it's quite interesting. There's the car, we're back at the car. So this is one of the reasons why this kind of forest running is so cool. Um, it's easy day, so there's no pressure. Good at home has just needed to stop for a quick bathroom break. Um, but her running partner has continued and he's just doing loops back and forth and back and forth through the forest. So same thing, he can just continue going, but he'll loop around effortlessly back to where uh, she is and meet her again, which I think is really cool. <laughs> no problem. The other thing to say about the forest is it's also kind of the common denominator for all uh, runners, regardless of the level that they're at in Ethiopia. So uh, the first morning I was there, uh, I sort of walked up the hill behind my house and just started jogging on my own. And I was immediately kind of grabbed by this group of guys as they ran past me and uh, told that I had to sort of join in at the back of the group and that I couldn't be running on my own. Um, so as I think I mentioned once, once before, um, running was seen as this deeply kind of social thing in Ethiopia and running alone was seen as very antisocial, same with eating alone. Um, so I was kind of immediately sucked into that group but what you would often see, somebody in a, a Nike tracksuit who was obviously contracted um, to, to run for Nike and obviously making quite a decent amount of money running races abroad at the front of a line of athletes running through the forest and then you'd see somebody at the back of the group who was uh, maybe wearing kind of borrowed running kit, wearing um, a pair of like jelly sandals on their feet, obviously uh, very much a beginner, and they're kind of all training together, and it's the way that people would learn uh, the craft of running uh, by sort of following other people. Essentially, just kind of learning by doing, finding out that way whether they're um, whether they're any good, essentially. In Toto specifically uh, was somewhere that I was told about before I even went out to Ethiopia. So when I was uh, in touch with Hailie, who was my research assistant, he said the one place you've really got to go and understand is in Toto. That's where Haile Gebrselassie Selassie trained every morning. Um, it's where he kind of credits getting into the shape that um, allowed him to break world records. And because of that, people kind of associate in Toto really with with Gebre Selassie and with other kind of great athletes and they kind of want to train there as a result of that. Um, it's also renowned for its altitude. I was told by one of the coaches when I first arrived that it was 4,000 meters above sea level, which is um, kind of a slight exaggeration, but it's very much like, you know, sometimes the, the kind of belief in the altitude being really um, impressive is as important as the altitude itself, I think. So he also said that it Im improved your aerobic capacity, but I think it improves uh, the capacity to dream as well, if you, if you believe that you're at this extremely high altitude, that you're training higher than anybody else. You're going to hit speed? Yeah. Are you guys going to do intervals now? No. No intervals today? Yeah. Nice. Just uh, stretching? Yes. Cool, man. Sweet. What was the distance? This one is uh, in one hour. Yeah. Uh, 12, 70. Beginning 5 and then most of the time 4.30. Sweet. Betam Konjo. So I think what Mike had to say at the end there about the belief in the altitude being more important than the altitude itself is a big part of what helps the Ethiopians do what they do. They push themselves to an extreme level and I think it's these beliefs in special places for running and their huge attention to teamwork and there is a, an extremely religious and spiritual country and running to them sort of kind of comes into all of that. It's, it's kind of like a religion, kind of part of their spirituality and so much of their heart and their mind and their soul is in it. It's, it's really incredible to see. I really enjoyed my time there. I have loved creating this content for you guys. Um, and so I want to say a big thank you to you. If you've enjoyed the series, please hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to get Sweat Elite episodes a few days early and ad free, hit the join button down below to join our members area. Um, there are a couple other perks that happen there as well, but we just want to say a big thank you to you guys. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. Cheers.